I'm Cheryl Prager. I'm Emeritus Professor of Mathematics at the University of Western Australia in Perth. And I have just finished a, a four-year term as Foreign Secretary of the Australian Academy of Science. Um, I'm here at the ICM uh, because I've had lots to do with uh, some of the programs and I'm looking forward to, uh, to all the wonderful things that are going to happen here. So Cheryl, as a mathematician, what is it about a large conference like this that brings together so many different mathematicians from different areas that's interesting to you? Well, I think the major thing is the celebration of excellence, the announcement of the Fields medalists and the other prize winners. And this year I was super excited that one of my former students, a former honours student, Akshay Venkatesh, was one of the um, field, four Fields medalists announced what, two days ago at the opening ceremony. So how did you get to know Akshay? I met him when he was 12 years old. He had just, I think, been to the International Maths Olympiad and won a bronze medal. And his mother and teachers had decided that he couldn't be kept at school much longer because there was not much more they could could give him mathematically. So we, we worked and made it possible for him to come to university um, aged 13. Um, and he, uh, he studied there and in his third year at the university, which would normally be a fourth year, uh, he, he did his uh, first undergraduate research project with me, his honours dissertation. And did you realise then that he was in, I mean obviously he was very young to go to university, but was it clear then that he had a sort of a different kind of insight into mathematics? I, I think even from the first time I met him, I realised he was an extraordinary young man. Um, his mum, his mother Svita decided it was, in her words, time that I met him. She brought him to my office, I was head of department at the time, and so he was sat down at a, a table and I was commenting with Svita um, just to work out how long he could stay there. When I started talking with him, he asked what, what was on the board, and I had just finished a PhD supervision with one of my students in group theory, and I started to explain and he kept asking questions and it was clear to me that he was gathering the essence of everything I was saying and he had a very mature and um, he, was, he was interested in all sorts of mathematics. He had a maturity that was much beyond his, his years and was very engaged with mathematics of all sorts. So uh, I, I was just impressed right from the start. <laughs> And Cheryl, could you tell us a bit about your work? You're in group theory, an area of pure mathematics. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what that is and what drew, what drew you to that area? Um, I'm interested in the mathematics of symmetry and we measure it with groups. Um, my my favourite essence of mathematics is, is the way um, groups act on all sorts of different structures, on designs, on networks. Um, the probability distribution of elements in groups which allows us to compute extremely efficiently with, with the, the basic objects, the finite simple groups. Um, you asked what, what drew me to it. I think as soon as I learnt at Oxford when I was studying um, permutation groups, I thought this is absolutely wonderful, this is what I want to do. and. Um, Soon after I finished my doctorate, there was the classification of the finite simple groups. And so for the next couple of decades, we were simply trying to understand what would be the consequences of this enormously powerful classification tool for understanding symmetrical structures of all types, understanding the groups, the designs, the, 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 the graph families, the networks that, um, that they act on. Um, and that's been my life work, I guess. <laughs> when we were watching the opening ceremony, there were these beautiful visions of uh, traditional crafts that clearly have a mathematical kind of flavour to them. And I think you wrote some papers on weaving, the mathematics of weaving, a long time ago. 
yes, that was a very long time ago. <laughs> I was fascinated by the fact that um, matrices with zeros and ones in them, like binary matrices, could be used to describe um, the patterns that we see, uh, could be used to describe the way um, a weaver would, um, would, would tie up a loom in order to uh, produce their pattern. So there would be um, four kinds of matrices um, and uh, the, the relationship between these matrices and the pattern was a, a simple matrix equation over a field of order two. So mathematicians would rise and be excited to by this, um, th this fact. Um, and I used to speak with um, school students and um, summer school students about this and, and also with groups of teachers. And the, 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 the matrix equation was perhaps a little at the edge of what could be understood by the, the, the students, but they, they loved um, producing a pattern in black and white squares, you, which you could um, substitute with zeros and ones, and then work out these other matrices about how to tell them which um, treadles to, to rip to raise and lower for each row in the pattern. So they could do all of this with black and white squares. You just changed everything to zeros and ones and then you had something that you could get a computer to take part in. And, and when I think back about it, um, the, the, uh, the, the, the Industrial Revolution with the advent of the Jacquard loom to help um, weave patterns much more, uh, much more quickly was really somehow similar to the advent of a computer for helping to multiply numbers. Um, it was the same sort of um, wish to, to use mathematical ideas to, to make computation much quicker. And you said you, you were working with some school students and some teachers. It seems through lots of different roles you've had involved in the International Mathematical Union and the Australian Mathematical Society but also as chair of the Olympiad, the Maths Olympiad. Um, you seem to be very involved in encouraging other mathematicians and young mathematicians in their careers. Um, why is that important to you? Well, young people are the future of mathematics and I find working with um, students, actually for me especially with graduate students and postdocs, it's very much fun. And it's one of the most rewarding parts of my, my job. Um, I continue to get a, a great deal of satisfaction with um, working with young people and seeing how they um, find new discoveries. Um, that is the best part, I think, <laughs> and the discoveries themselves, but also the people. <laughs> and I suppose seeing someone like Aksha, who you knew from such a young age, what he, the work that he's ended up doing and the role he's now having in the masque must be very rewarding. Oh, I, I am so happy, excited and proud of what Akshay has achieved. Um, he's, he's going to do even far better things in the future. I'm really glad that he's um, accepted the, the job back in Princeton where he'll be surrounded by, again, young, bright, powerful mathematicians and I'm, I'm so pleased for him and excited that um, myself personally and my university played such a, a crucial role in the beginning of his, his, um, his, his, his uh, education and training.